Let's talk about the Toyota Raids. The Toyota Raids just might be one of the most important and most anticipated releases this year. Now, although Toyota Motor Philippines has not yet confirmed any release dates or details at all about the car, we've been keeping this on our radar for the past year now and I gotta tell you it has the recipe to become a real bestseller for the brand but there are a couple of questions we know that you've been dying to ask what does it even look like what current models are available that can compete with it and the most important is how much is it gonna cost luckily our friends at the real auto YouTube channel subscribe to the channel here we're able to give the Toyota race a first look and first drive and we're here to tell you everything that you can expect from it. Here's our first impression and speculative look at the upcoming and highly anticipated Toyota Rays on another episode of The Z-List. Number one, it's quite the looker. The Toyota Rays is part of a newer subcompact crossover segment in the Philippines. Now in Japan, it's actually classified as a K car. It's only a tad smaller than the Kia Stonic and Cherry Tigo 2 Pro, but larger than a Hyundai Venue for sure. But what's certainly different about the Toyota Rays is how much it pulls inspiration when it comes to design from its larger Toyota cousins. The front end looks like a mashup of all the best features of the Toyota RAV4, CHR, and even the Corolla Cross with LED headlamps and fancy sequential turn signals. It did just a cute looking aesthetic smaller cars go for and instead aspires to be a sportier alternative. Now with sharp lines and an aggressive angular trapezoidal grille, it proved that smaller cars don't have to be boring at all and can actually be quite the looker. We might not be getting the Toyota CHR here, but hints of the same design language peek through, especially with that side profile. Larger doors and a lower belt line give me the impression that it's much larger than it actually is. 17 inch wheels totally complete the look and what seems to be a two-tone color scheme adds even more heft. Ditto for the black plastic cladding along the wheel arches. The rear features LED tail lamps and although it isn't as garish looking as the front end, it's modern, sporty, and certainly youthful looking. And the best part of it all, I can finally say goodbye to those 90s door handles. I mean, take a look. Welcome to the future. Number two, it's what's on the inside that counts. Now, my chief complaint with the Daihatsu developed Toyota vehicles is that the interior amenities don't usually coincide with the funky exterior. There's really nothing to complain about cars like the Wego, the Avanza, or even the Rush, but I was certainly expecting more effort with the interior design and ergonomics given that those aforementioned models have some of the best exterior designs in their own respective segments. The Toyota Rays, however, wipes away those fears of mine thanks to an interior design that I can most certainly say is more in line with the 2020s. The dashboard is nicely sculpted and the AC vents don't look like an afterthought. It also has a nice 9-inch touchscreen infotainment system with both Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Now, our friends at The Real Auto mentioned that it does have a nice 6-speaker system, but we would have to confirm if the Philippines would be getting the same in any of the available variants. The top-end spec also would be getting automatic climate control, a nice leather wrap steering wheel with media and call controls, paddle shifters, and an eye candy 7-inch multi-info display right there behind the wheel. Litter seats are also a nice touch, but the Toyota Rays offers great interior space and ergonomics thanks to a maximized cabin, 60-40 rear splits for the seats in the back, and a large boot at the hatch. Number three, the drive. According to the unofficial information, the 2022 Toyota Rays will initially come in three flavors, the E, G and turbo variants and will be available in either a three cylinder 1.2 liter naturally aspirated engine that makes 87 horsepower and 130 newton meters of torque and the all new much awaited one liter three cylinder engine that makes 97 horsepower and 149 newton meters of torque weighing as light as 970 kilograms and those figures mean great power to weight ratio for the small crossover. 
Giving any small car a turbocharged three-cylinder engine creates depth and character that you wouldn't find in any other configuration. And the Toyota Ray's offering this option for buyers is certainly a car guy's wish come true. Here's a bit of modern tech that I'm surprised isn't being talked about that often. Now, powering the front wheels are either a standard five-speed manual transmission for the entry-level E variant or Toyota's all-new dual model CVT system. Now, traditional CVT systems rely on a belt-driven mechanism instead of gears to transfer power to the drivetrain. Now, this removes the need for actual gears, but companies would program simulated gears to simulate that nice shift shock and improve the driving experience. Now, not just like a go-kart. This helps with power delivery and fuel economy, but the downside is that it subjectively reduces driving dynamics and creates an odd droning noise at cruising speeds. Again, like a go-kart. I understand that CVTs aren't really what car enthusiasts or motoring journalists call their transmissions of choice, but this guy, as well as millions of other car buyers, really can't tell the difference. Uh, even when pointed out to me, I couldn't find much to say about CVTs other than they help make the drive smoother and save on the pumps as well. Now, there isn't any information yet as to whether Toyota Rays will be getting Toyota Safety Sense, but other markets certainly have some active driving aids similar to it. But I think I can live without that in a small car. And it's nice that Toyota is certainly thinking about these things and only further improving on their technology. Number four, if the price is right. Toyota Rays supposedly would be starting at 746,000 pesos for the entry level E variant with a manual and 1816,000 pesos for the CVT. The mid variant G model comes at 906,000 pesos and is only available with the CVT, but comes with additional entertainment and convenience features. The top of the line turbo model will be available for 1,031,000 pesos with an optional white pearl colorway for an extra 5,000 pesos and promises loads of fun with a turbocharged three-cylinder engine. This puts it squarely against rivals such as the Hyundai Venue, Kia Stonic, Ford EcoSport, Cherry Tigo 2 Pro, and can even be a viable option for larger crossover SUVs like the MG ZS, Geely Cool Ray, Cherry Tigo 5X, Chang'an CS35 Plus, and even the all-new Chevy Tracker. If you ask me, I can't wait for the release of the Rays and to get my chance to test it out for you guys, so watch out for that on our channel. What do you think? Are you interested in getting your own chance to see the Toyota Rays? Leave us a comment in the comment section down below. Now we've made a video of all the other cars we think will be released this year and you can find that right here and tell us what other cars you want to see. This is Roy Robles, thanks for watching and I'll check you guys on those videos.